So for um, number 37, we want to take the area bounded between these two curves. Um, and so I've drawn that in yellow, right? It's the area bounded between the red curve and the green curve. And we want to revolve it about the, um, the y-axis. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to find these two points of intersection so that we know our bounds of integration. Uh, so we're just going to set these equal to each other, right? We're going to say that uh, minus x squared plus 6x minus 8 is equal to 0. Uh, I'm just going to multiply everything by minus 1 so we can factor it. So that's x squared uh, minus 6x plus 8 is equal to 0. And now this factors um, this factors by trial and error, and the two numbers that we're going to choose are minus 2 and minus 4. So this gives us x minus 2 times x minus 4 is equal to 0. So we can see here that x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 4. So uh, this gives us already the bounds for our integral, right? Oops. This gives us the bound for our integral that goes from 2 all the way out to 4. Um, okay, so once we have the bounds of our integral, let's think about what happens when we revolve this area. So what we're doing here is we're taking all the points here, all the height, the points of the height in that red curve. And so we can see here that this is just the height that gets revolved about the y-axis, like so. And so this is going to give us a cylinder, right? And we can think of the cylinder as though it were an infinitely thin sheet of paper that got wrapped around the y-axis. So if we unwrap it, it's just a sheet of paper, and this does have an area, right? Um, and it is an area as a function of x, because the further along that I go on my x-axis, so maybe if I went from here, we can see here that my cylinder was going to be bigger, right? It's going to be a taller cylinder. Uh, I'm just going to erase that so it doesn't get too crowded here in our drawing. Um, and so this definitely is a function of x, and this is going to be equal to base times height, right? So all we have to do here is find an expression for my base and my height in terms of x. And so we can see here that our volume is going to be the sum of all these areas, because if we sum up all these cylinders, we are going to get a volume um, that has been revolved about the y-axis. So let's think about how we're going to do this. Um, well, the height here... That's pretty easy. As we can see, it's just the height of that red curve, right? It's wherever it touches it. So that is going to be minus x squared plus 6x minus 8. And the base here, we can see that it's just, um, it's a circle, right? That circle, which is the base of our cylinder. Um, and so it's just the circumference of that circle. Now, the circumference here is uh, 2 pi r, right? However, we don't want this radius in terms of r. We want it in terms of x because we're, um, we are integrating with respect to x. So let's see how we're going to get this radius. Well, this radius is going to go from 0 all the way out to wherever I'm at on my x-axis, right? Um, if I were at x is equal to 4 here, my radius would be 4. If I were at x is equal to um, 3, my radius would be 3, and so on. So it's just the value of x. Um, and so we can say here that this base is going to be 2 pi x. Well, now we have an expression for the base and for the height. So our area is going to be, um, is going to be base times height, which is going to be 2 pi x, which is our base, times minus x squared plus 6x minus 8, which is our height. And because we're integrating this expression, right, this is our expression for the area, which is this guy right here. Um, since we're going to integrate it, we want to be able to express it as a simple polynomial and not as a product because that's going to make our integral easy. Um, and so I'm just going to distribute that x. So this will give me 2 pi times uh, minus x cubed plus 6x squared uh, minus 8x. Yeah. And so once I have an expression for my area, I can now put this in my integral, right? Um, and so my volume is going to be the integral from 2 to 4. 2 pi goes outside because it's a constant. And so it's the integral of minus x cubed. Uh, plus 6x squared minus 8x and all of this times dx. So once I have this, um, let me just improve this. 
I'm just going to take the antiderivative, so that's still 2 pi times uh, minus x fourth to the power of 4 plus 6x cubed over 3 minus 8x squared over 2, and all of this evaluated from 2 to 4. Um, so let's see. This is going to give us, which is equal to 2 pi. I'm going to evaluate everything at 4. Okay, so I'm going to put in, whenever I see x, I'm going to put 4. Um, and so this is going to give me minus 64 uh, plus 128 and then minus 64. And now I'm going to evaluate it at two, but then I'm going to put a negative, right? So um, this is gonna be minus minus, uh, so minus minus four, um, minus 16, and then let's see, uh, minus minus four, minus 16, and lastly, minus minus 16, yeah. And so if I simplify this, this is going to give me 2 pi times, let's see, minus 68 minus 68 plus 128, that cancels out. So this here goes to 0. Uh, minus 16 minus minus 16, this goes to 0. And we're left with, um, we're left with minus minus 4. So that's going to give us 4. And so the answer is going to be 2 pi times 4, it's going to be 8 pi. And that's what I get when I take this area and I revolve it around the y-axis.